Hello, my name is the Salvadoran Warrior, and today we're going to be talking about another <clears throat> class mod character named the Yanissary. And um, he's a character that I have the strange feeling we're responsible for making the Blazing Lord. Um, I, I kind of like put the two and two together, and what was pretty interesting is that um, while the Blazing Lord had a transformation gimmick to where it would lower the damage as a human and finish them off with a finisher with the uh, transformation gimmick. Um, the Yanissary can, um, can't transform, but can play two roles. He can play the um, backline role. I mean, he can play the back row, but he does damage to the enemy's back row. Or he could be a frontliner and not only provide damage on the front lines, but it can also provide really good support too. But um, I'll talk about the combat skills later and the camping skills too. But right now, I'm just ready to talk about the, um, the uh, base stats, resistance, and... Of course, combat skills and camping comes later. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, the Yanissary um, is a Turkish, a Turkish uh, trooper, and um, his base stats are pretty interesting. Um, obviously, his health pool is decent. His dodge is pretty decent. Um, damage is also pretty decent too, but the crit is very natural. He's probably like the few characters in the Darkest Dungeon roster, both class mod and official roster list, that has um, natural crit this high. Everything else just comes after. And um, I don't know. He's just really good um, on the crit based. Um, meaning. If you're planning to do damage with him, um, this crit number will show up a lot. Um, his buffs does boost his crit too, but I'll I'll talk about the combat skills later um, because it's going to be really important and will make him shine even brighter um, because of those things. So for now, his base stats are pretty good, but the one that the one stat that seems magnificent out of all the other ones is this number right here nine percent of crit really really good um he's also pretty fast too but um the crit is just what caught my eye um his resistance his resistances are pretty high up there um ignore the um negative quirks without the negative quirks um the stun would have been like at a hundred and his blights would have been at 90 so He's pretty tanky. Um, I think the most unique resistance stat is his move stat, since um, it's at 125. So if he's being forced to move a position by the enemy, it won't happen. He'll hold the line like a good soldier supposed to. Other than that, that's all I have to say about his resistances and his base stats. So let's start talking about his combat skills. So, if you're planning to put him in the back line, his first combat skill is this shot. It is a combat skill that can only be used in positions three to four, and he can hit any of the positions on the enemy side from position one through four. And the accuracy is at 110, crit is at 5%, and he gets a plus 15 damage boost if the enemy is on the fourth position. However, if he shoots enemies that's in position one, he gets penalized with a negative 15 damage drop. So like I said, um, he um, can do damage on the back row and um, 
usually the back row can be an issue. And, you know, it, it's pretty good. And that's pretty much all I have to say. It does damage. Um, if you hit from positions 3 to 2, however, you won't get that negative um, penalty like you would with position 1. So I think you're good hitting 3 to 2. But position 1 will hurt you. So don't bother um, trying to shoot enemies in the front. Because enemies in position 1... Um, your heroes that's in position 1 or 2 or possibly 3 are always responsible for dealing with enemies in position 1. Not the 4th position. So, just something to think about when using this ability when it comes to um, dealing damage, I guess. So, the next um, combat skill is Brace the Gun. It's an ability that's a boost. It can only be used in position 4. And it gives the Janissary a 50% armor piercing, 10% crit, and 20 plus accuracy if in the 4th position. Now going back to his natural crit, 9%, if you throw this buff on him, not only does he get the armor piercing, but that... 9% crit goes up to 19%. That's really, really high. And if you were to slap some crit um, trinkets to it, even better. It's going to make them be very scary, and you're going to see those dodge numbers like crazy. I recommend um, this move. However, the strategy is you'll use this um, ability first, and then on your next turn of Janissary, you start shooting it up with this ability and it's gonna shine even better and if you plan to shoot position people in positions one I guess it wouldn't matter with the damage penalty because the crits gonna take care of that it didn't say anything about a um, negative um, penalty on crit only damage so you're pretty much golden with this buff right here so there you go the next ability for the Janissary is Thin the Herd. Thin the Herd is an ability that can be used in positions 2 through 4. And it's an AoE attack that can hit the middle positions of the enemies, uh, second position and third position. And the accuracy is at 110. Damage mod is a negative 60. And the... Um, was it the crit mod is at uh, one percent so the crit isn't that high however if you were to throw this on the enemy the enemy gets a debuff of negative 20 down uh negative 20 dodge and they receive 10 percent crit so going back to the crit number or at least any of your allies who has high crit numbers will be doing more crits on the middle row. And that negative 20 dodge, really, really good. Especially on higher dungeons, uh, like champion level dungeons, where you're gonna be dealing with enemies with high dodge numbers, and it's gonna drive you insane. But with this debuff, you'll have the advantage, and your attacks shouldn't be missing all the time if you lower their dodge numbers. Plus, the crit is just really, really good. So, that's um, another ability that makes the Janissary really, really good. So, let's move on. The next combat skill is Tempered Slash. Tempered Slash is an ability that can be used in positions 1 to 2 and can hit positions 1 to 2. And the accuracy is kind of low, 105, but... The dodge numbers is a plus 15, crit mod will be at 7%. So this goes back to his 9% uh, crit damage, and you combine that with the 7% crit, even higher. So this move is already good already in his arsenal. However, um, this ability only can be used in the front row, and this is what I said before when I said that the Janissary can 
be used either in the front row position or in the back row. So if you want to do some range damage, this is your go-to ability. You do this to this. If you're planning to use the front row with this character, um, you can go to this to this or the next combat ability, which is uh, one man band. One man band is another combat skill ability that is a party buff. He gives everyone, including himself, 10 accuracy, 15% damage. And if he's guarding, he gets a plus 4 speed and a plus 6% crit when he's guarding. He also gives himself a resistance of negative 22% uh, stress damage resistance. Now, giving yourself 10 accuracy and damage of 15% is already good. And speed and crit that comes along with it is also really good. Your allies won't get the boost in speed and crit, but the damage and accuracy is just too good to not pass up. So you throw this and then you do this, or you can do this to this, and you know, you'll pretty much be golden. You have a um, variety of choices. Going back to this ability here, you're probably wondering, okay, so he can guard. Which combat skill gives him the chance to guard? And it's this one, Brothers in Arms. This one is a guard ability and can be applied to um, many of his um, allies. The only problem is, is that, uh, that debuff on the self. He gets a negative 20% um, percent, um, damage penalty. But... He gives himself plus 20 accuracy, plus 5% on crit, and plus 20 protection. That's already good as it is. Um, and of course, there are trinkets in the Darkest Dungeon that can buff his reposes, um, his repose damage. So the negative 20 may be, you know, damn. But if you apply the trinkets that increases his repose. And this ability, and possibly this ability, the negative um, damage penalty shouldn't really be your your highest concerns, because you're betting everything on the crit. You're betting that he's going to crit the enemy. You're gonna see those big numbers, and you're gonna get through the the match faster. So that's the Janissary's um, guard slash repose. So there you go. His last combat skill is probably one of my favorites. Song of Valor is an ability that can be used only that can be used in all positions. And it's a stress heal. He gives um, everyone a stress heal of five uh, negative five. And he buffs himself a 30% of stress healing. Done. So you um, add negative five. With the bonus he gets for stress healing, and you should see the numbers around 7 or 8. So it's already good as it is. If you give him some trinkets, yet again, to help him out with that um, stress healing, the numbers should be slightly higher. Just slightly. Um, and, you know, not all enemy, uh, not all allies are able to stress heal themselves. In fact, sometimes they stress heal just them and not the team. And you get like maybe a handful of heroes, including the the Jester, that can stress heal an entire party. Um, rarely come to the Darkest Dungeon list. And the Janissary is one of those unique uh, mod characters that can stress heal an entire party. So, it's already good as it is. Overall, if you want to use them in the back row, I recommend something like uh, like this. So he'll be stuck on the fourth position. Or what I've been doing, you do this. If you're not planning to stress heal, this is also good too. 
if you're not planning to do the debuffing, this is also good too. Um, he's he's very good. He's a really a jack of all trades um, hero that can play the role of a back row support or frontline support or frontline stress healer damager like person or stress healer support. He's really good at doing his job. So that's what I like about the Janissary, one of my favorite characters so far. Next is the camping skills. Now like most mod characters in the Darkest Dungeon, they come with three of the same um, camping skill. Encourage, time cost two, wounded care, time cost two, and the useless prep talk, which I highly don't recommend because it's such a bad um, camping skill. However, these four camping skills are very unique to the Janissary. The first one is Marching Plan. It's a time cost three, where um, all companions get a two speed uh, of points, and this lasts for four battles. Giving yourself a plus two in speed is okay. It's not the greatest, nor is it OP. Uh, you and you know you have to like make that decision do you want to be fast or do you just want to you know deal with not having the advantage in speed because sometimes it can be a good thing to have speed and sometimes it just feels unnecessary it's just one of those things you just have to think about that's all um the next camping skill is brothers of the spoon it's a Time cost four, which heals the party by 30% and gives um, everyone a random buff. Now, these random buffs are super RNG. I don't know what these buffs are. It could be damage, protection, dodge, speed. It could be anything, but it won't be negative. I guarantee it. You will never get a debuff nor a disadvantage when it comes to getting a random buff on your companions so it's totally fine and being at a time cost four is kind of expensive but you have to make that decision again or just if you find yourself needing more healing you'll throw the brothers of the spoon at your party hoping that not only will you get healed more but you'll get that random buff so it's a, it's a semi gamble but nothing too negative so you will benefit from using this camping skill the next um camping skill is beast of the devil or da da devil i don't know devil beast of the devil screw it it's a time cost four which um stress heals the entire party with a negative 15 and they get stress healing receive of 15 percent in battle and it only lasts for four battles and this is really good because if everyone has a plus 15 of stress heal received then that means the stress heals that he'll do with the um, buff of 30% will be even greater with the trinkets included that boosts his stress healing so it's it's really good if you really need a uh, have a huge numbers and stress heals so i would just recommend it if you're catching yourself getting a home amount of stress and you need someone to do the stress healing for the next four battles just so you can lower down those numbers and not to worry about having people get inflicted with a negative um virtue or just you know not play the risky game of hoping to get a good virtue and overall it's a safe camping skill the last camping skill is this one right here sultan's tail and this one is completely free on one companion only you get to reduce um negative five stress um heal on someone and you can use this up to three times this is really good. 
especially for the fact that you get to um apply it to the same companion if they need an extra uh five points down with their stress so let's say they're at 10 and everyone else is cool except for that hero you can just tell them a tale two times and they'll be at zero um, however he can't do this onto himself obviously so um, that's pretty much it with his camping skills um, they're pretty good like this one's like decent but all these ones are very situational but still good at the same time um, so if you really don't feel like this is all that good I, I guess you can do this or this but I recommend this only just this only because at least this one heals the entire party this heals one person um, this does stress healing but this gives it five more points in stress healing with the buff of getting heals received and of course speed is a coin toss based on your strategy and this is just completely free already good as it is as for trinkets well I'm using one of the uh, unique trinkets towards him and since it negates um, brothers in arms I guess that's okay because the only thing you have to worry about is just stress healing the party you get 20 you apply that with the buff he gets later you'll be at 50 stress healing done so already we're starting to see something magnificent as for this uh, I was thinking about taking this out for the crit trinkets like I like I said but end up going for the damage one so oh well maybe next time and uh, if you want to know who he's compatible with well I think he's the only hero that can be applied to any party you put him into it, it's just based on your strategy do you have enough manpower to do damage or do you have the um, luxury in applying um, buffs on your party so that way you'll already have the advantage there's a lot of things you have to think about when trying to create a team surrounding the Janissary having to figure out which role he'll be part of is probably the most challenging thing for um, a character like this so um, until then you know I'll leave a link in the description below on the Janissary in case you want to try him out um, there's no comic for this one but um, there are comments surrounding the Janissary so if you want more advice or tips you can read the comments and see what people say about the Janissary and hear about team compositions and all that whatnot until then uh, when this video ends I'll show off a um, gameplay footage of the Janissary just so you can get a general idea what he's like on the field and um, until next time uh, please like and subscribe and you know if you decide to pick up the Janissary let me know what your experiences are and um, I'll see you guys around so take care of yourselves stay safe and I'll see you in the next review goodbye